A new tunnel, 6.2 kilometers long and over 9 meters wide, is being blasted through a mountain just 30 meters from a live operational tunnel packed with thousands of cars every day. One wrong move, one miscalculation in the daily detonations could bring the entire mountain down on unsuspecting travelers. To carve this second artery, engineers would have to blast and remove over 460,000 cubic meters of solid rock, all while the original tunnel continued to breathe with the constant flow of traffic. This wasn't just construction, it was a four-year-long surgical operation on a mountain. But how do you blast through a mountain just meters from thousands of moving cars without causing a disaster? And what happens when the mountain itself starts to fight back? For centuries, the only way to travel between the historic city of Hu and the coastal hub of Da Nang was over the Hai Van Pass. Its name means Ocean Cloud Pass, a fitting description for the 21-kilometer ribbon of road that climbs nearly 500 meters into the clouds, with breathtaking views of the sea below. But its beauty hid a dark side. The pass was infamous for its steep slopes, hairpin turns and thick fog that could reduce visibility to zero in an instant. It was known as the biggest traffic bottleneck in Vietnam and a black spot for traffic accidents. In the years before the first tunnel was built, the pass saw an average of 20 major accidents, seven deaths and 22 injuries every single year, forcing the road to close nearly 40 times annually. To conquer this deadly mountain, Vietnam embarked on a monumental project. In 2005, the first Hai Van Tunnel opened, a 6.3-kilometer marvel that slashed the treacherous one-hour journey over the pass to a safe 15-minute drive. It was a triumph, but this victory created a new, unforeseen problem. Vietnam's economy was booming, and traffic grew by an astonishing 10 to 15 percent each year, far faster than anyone predicted. The single two-way tunnel that was meant to solve the bottleneck became the bottleneck itself, choked with congestion and dangerously overloaded. The first tunnel had conquered the mountain, but it couldn't conquer progress. Now, engineers faced an even greater challenge. How do you upgrade a mega project while it's still running, deep inside a mountain that holds deadly surprises? To build the second tunnel, engineers couldn't just use brute force. They had to have a conversation with the mountain. They used a sophisticated technique first pioneered in the Alps called the New Austrian Tunneling Method, or NATM. This was the same method used for the first tunnel, but this time the stakes were infinitely higher. Instead of just digging a hole and lining it with thick concrete, NATM is a more delicate process. Think of it like this. You don't just assume what the mountain needs, you ask it. The process begins by excavating a small section of the tunnel, usually just the top arched portion, in what's called a top heading. Immediately after the blast, before the rock has time to shift, crews spray a thin but strong layer of concrete, called shotcrete, onto the newly exposed surface. This provides instant temporary support. But here is where the conversation begins. Engineers embed sophisticated sensors into this initial lining and the surrounding rock. These instruments measure every tiny movement, every subtle shift or deformation in the mountain. This data tells them exactly how the rock is responding to the new opening. Is it stable? Is it under stress? Based on this feedback, they can decide precisely what kind of additional support is needed. It might be long steel anchors called rock bolts, drilled deep into the rock to pin unstable layers together, or curved steel arches for extra strength in weaker zones. By listening to the rock, they use only the necessary amount of support, making the tunnel both safer and more economical. Once the top arch is secure, they excavate the lower portion, called the bench, and finally the floor, or invert, to complete the tunnel's profile. This cycle of excavating, spraying, measuring and reinforcing, known as a round, was repeated thousands of times over four years to carve out the full 6.2-kilometer length of High Van Tunnel 2. But this mountain was not a silent partner in the conversation. It had a violent history. The geology of the High Van Pass is a treacherous mix. In some sections, engineers had to blast through solid, incredibly hard granite. Rock so strong, you would need to stack 200 cars on a dinner plate sized piece just to crack it. But just meters away, this solid rock could give way to zones of completely decomposed granite. Rock so weathered and weak, it was like digging through compacted sand. 
The biggest enemy, however, wasn't the rock itself, but what was hidden inside it. Water. The mountain is crisscrossed with geological fault lines, creating a network of channels for groundwater under immense pressure. During the construction of the first tunnel, engineers learned this lesson the hard way. In 2002, as they were digging a separate ventilation shaft, they hit one of these fault zones. A massive deluge of water burst through the rock, flooding the tunnel at a rate of 300 cubic meters per hour, enough to fill a backyard swimming pool every 10 minutes. It was a catastrophic event that nearly derailed the entire project and required bringing in massive pumps and advanced Japanese engineering techniques to control. Knowing this history, the team building Tunnel 2 was on high alert. Every blast carried the risk of not only destabilizing the adjacent active Tunnel 1, but also of unleashing another underground flood. The initial sections near the tunnel entrances or portals were particularly dangerous. Here, the ground was not solid rock, but soft, unstable soil and eroded debris. During the first tunnel's construction, this soft ground led to a terrifying collapse at the south portal, where the earth gave way and poured into the excavation site. To recover, they had to perform a complex bypass operation, digging a new passage from the nearby evacuation tunnel, the very tunnel they were now expanding, to get back on track. These past battles with water and weak rock served as a constant reminder that every meter of progress into the mountain was a hard-won victory. A tunnel is more than just a hole in a mountain. It's a complex machine with its own life support systems. Once the raw excavation was complete, engineers began installing the sophisticated technology that makes Hyvan Tunnel too safe for thousands of vehicles every day. First are the tunnel's lungs, its powerful ventilation system. Driving through a 6.2-kilometer tunnel, you need a constant supply of fresh air. This is handled by a longitudinal ventilation system, which uses a series of 16 massive, reversible jet fans mounted on the tunnel ceiling to act like jet engines, pushing a column of fresh air through the entire length of the tunnel. But in a tunnel this long, you can't just rely on pushing air from the ends. The system's core is a massive ventilation aided. A separate 1.8 kilometer long tunnel dug from the side of the mountain to intersect the main tunnel near its midpoint. This adit acts like a giant snorkel, allowing the system to draw in fresh air and expel exhaust fumes directly from the center, ensuring the air quality remains safe throughout. To further clean the air, the system includes three electrostatic precipitators, which use high-voltage electricity to remove tiny particles of dust and soot from the air, like giant electronic air purifiers. Next is the tunnel's nervous system, a highly advanced control network known as SCADA, which stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. This is the brain of the entire high van tunnel complex. In a central control room, Operators watch a wall of monitors displaying real-time information from every corner of both tunnels. The SCADA system connects to over 580 sensors and 174 surveillance cameras. It monitors and controls everything – traffic flow, vehicle speed, the operation of the ventilation fans, carbon monoxide levels, the brightness of the 1,500 LED lights, and the status of the fire alarm systems. If a car stops, if the air quality drops, or if a fire is detected, the system instantly alerts the operators so they can respond in seconds. This seamless integration of two massive parallel tunnels into a single intelligent network was a major technological leap, ensuring both tunnels operate as one cohesive system. Finally, there is the tunnel's ultimate safety net, its emergency and fire response systems. In a long tunnel, the greatest fear is fire, to ensure a quick escape, the two main tunnels are connected by 15 cross passages, one every 400 meters. Eleven of these are for pedestrians, and four are large enough for emergency vehicles to drive through, allowing people to evacuate from one tunnel to the safety of the other in minutes. The tunnel is equipped with a state-of-the-art fire detection and alarm system that can pinpoint the location of a fire instantly. But technology is only part of the solution. The High Van Tunnel Complex has its own dedicated on-site firefighting and rescue force trained specifically for tunnel emergencies. They conduct regular large-scale drills, simulating worst-case scenarios like multi-vehicle pileups and fires, to ensure they are always prepared to respond effectively and save lives. They had conquered the rock, 
tamed the water and given the tunnel a brain. The engineering was a triumph. But could the project survive a battle, fought not in the mountain, but on spreadsheets and in boardrooms? The High Van Tunnel 2 expansion was approved in 2016 with a total investment of over 7.2 trillion Vietnamese dong, or about $310 million. The project was built under a public-private partnership, with the private investor, Deo Car Group, financing and constructing the tunnel in exchange for the right to collect tolls. In a remarkable display of efficiency, the Vietnamese engineers and workers completed the massive project in September 2020, a full three months ahead of schedule. The tunnel officially opened to traffic in January 2021. But just weeks after its grand opening, a crisis erupted. The investor announced that the brand new tunnel might have to close. The reason was a financial standoff. A critical portion of the project's funding, a government contribution of 1.18 trillion dong, or about $51 million, had not been paid, with annual operating costs for the tunnel complex running at a staggering $4.3 million the project was suddenly not financially viable. For a brief, tense period, the future of Southeast Asia's longest road tunnel hung in the balance. After urgent high-level meetings between the investor and the government, a resolution was found. The tunnel remained open and the promised funds were eventually allocated, allowing this critical piece of infrastructure to continue serving the nation. Today, the High Van Tunnel complex stands as a fully realized vision. The twin tunnels now operate with one-way traffic in each tube, completely eliminating the risk of head-on collisions and smoothing the flow of vehicles. This efficiency has cut the transit time through the mountain from 15 minutes down to just six. Since the first tunnel opened, the complex has safely guided nearly 48 million vehicles through the heart of the mountain, a number that grows every day. From a deadly mountain pass to a single choked tunnel, and now to a state-of-the-art Twin Bore Expressway. The story of the High Van Tunnel is a story of a nation overcoming incredible challenges. It is a landmark achievement, the longest road tunnel in Southeast Asia, built entirely by the skill and determination of Vietnamese engineers. What do you think was the biggest challenge they faced? The unstable geology, the financial crisis, or the danger of blasting next to live traffic? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this look at one of Southeast Asia's greatest mega projects, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next incredible story.